The sleeve compresses your muscle while fighting the effects of pounding on the ground and gravity. Then it pushes your deoxygenated blood flowing back up to your heart to gather more oxygen. Pro sports isn't just something that changes every year due to the new players, swapped around rosters, new coaches, and so on. They change every year because of rules. Every offseason, the various sports committees come together to see what adjustments need to be made to the league rules based on what happened in the previous season. Sometimes it's small things, and sometimes it's big changes, but they do happen. And for the NBA, a consistent thing that's changed every year is the approved accessories list, because every year the NBA seems to find more and more things to outlaw. So allow us to show you 10 accessories that are banned in the NBA. Be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Number 10. Dark Goggles how did this come to be? It's a lot simpler than you might think. It was 2011 and Dwayne Wade had just come off of having a big migraine episode. This can be a very serious condition and they can have lasting effects, one of which is light sensitivity, which is obviously something you don't want to happen when you're trying to play in a brightly lit NBA court. To combat this, Wade got himself some dark tinted goggles so that he could go at a good level. Because these had never been used before, the NBA allowed it for one game but then they banned it afterward because in their view it would stop players from seeing his eyes. Which kind of is odd because you can still see his eyes, just not fully. Plus, when you're playing defense, it's true you're looking at the face of the opponent, but not just the eyes. The eyes can trick you in regards to where the player might go next. So hiding the eyes is at times honestly not a problem if you know what you're doing. But still, it's banned, and that's not the only thing. Number 9. Supreme Compression Sleeve if you don't know, compression sleeves are used to help get blood flow going at a better rate. Many NBA players use them and you'll find that they are legal, to an extent. Because in the case of Kelly Oubre, he found out the exception to that rule, mainly the Supreme compression sleeve. He wore it to a game and it got a lot of news because it wasn't one he wore on his arm, but on his leg. And apparently the NBA thought it wasn't appropriate or something because they outright banned it and he was not happy because he felt they did so because it was too wavy. We're not really sure how to comment on that, so we'll just move on. Number 8. Toothpicks and Straws The NBA is very adamant about prohibiting items that can in essence hurt a player intentionally or accidentally. And over the years they've noticed that players have various chewing habits that they'll try and satiate on the bench as they wait to go back in. Some players chew on toothpicks, some have chewed on plastic straws. But no matter the rhyme or the reason, the NBA has found out about this and banned them outright. Yeah, it's very sad and you could argue that items like straws would need to have some help before hurting the players. But the NBA does what it wants and it wanted them banned. And should the players find another item to chew? Yeah, they'll likely get those banned as well. Number 7. Ninja Style Headbands Headwear in the NBA is not new at all and in fact there have been players who are synonymous with it over the years. But some of them are banned, like Ninja Style Headbands. To be clear here, we're talking about headbands that are just strips of cloth that are tied up by the players themselves, thus giving the look of a martial artist or a ninja. The NBA, after some deliberation, would go on to say that they were banned. But why they were banned is actually a multi-layered thing. First off, the headbands were outlawed because the players just put them on and didn't go through an approval process. So in many ways, they would have never been approved in the first place. But most importantly, they couldn't just put them on, they had to be tied on which meant that regulating length would be hard to impossible. The loose straps in the back could hit someone in the head or eye if whipped the right way, plus they could be grabbed and hurt the player wearing it. In this particular instance, banning them makes sense, not the least of which is because of the unintentional harm that can be done to players, or the intentional harm if someone is trying to do a hard foul. This is honestly a better safe than sorry thing here. Number 6. Upside Down Headbands Players like Rajon Rondo and J.R. Smith decided that instead of wearing their NBA-branded headbands the correct way, they were going to wear them upside down, so that the NBA logo and even the Nike logo was turned upside down. According to many, this was meant to send a message to the NBA and its commissioner. Message received. The NBA felt that an upside-down logo is very much like an upside-down flag, a show of disrespect. Thus, players can't wear them like that. Some tried to fight back, but the fines quickly stopped them from going forward. Number 5. APL Sneakers Sneakers are a key part of the NBA. Many brands have come and gone in terms of making them for key NBA players, and they're as stylish as they are functional. However, there are some restrictions, as you might expect. Such as with APL sneakers. This happened back with the Boston Celtics in the 2010-2011 playoffs. They found out about a new shoe called the APL Sneakers, and they wanted to wear them for the playoffs. 
They even told the NBA about them to try and get a proper clearance. But after the league learned more about them, they got instantly banned. Because unlike regular sneakers, these were ones that had lock and load technology that would allow players to instantly jump higher in their vertical leap. So basically, they were very springy shoes. The owners and creators of the shoe noted that players would exert less energy when jumping with their shoe. So they'd be a huge boost on the court. The NBA likely felt that this would be an unfair advantage to anyone who wore it, and if the whole league wore it, it would cause a surge in play that may not have been deemed fair or fruitful. When it comes to the NBA making things fair, the league doesn't mess around. Number 4. Non-approved brand logos The NBA is many things, but arguably its most important thing is that it's a business. One that has deals and partnerships with other brands, and that helps make up a lot of what goes on in the NBA as a whole. It's an NBA rule that you must cover up all logos that do not coincide with the branding rules of the NBA. A great example of this is with Lonzo Ball. The son of LeVar Ball is a big part of the Big Baller brand and has a tattoo of the brand's logo on his arm. Because of the NBA rule against this, he has to wear tape over his logo in every single game that he's in, or else pay a fine. It's not just that brand to be clear, it's all brands that don't have a direct connection or approval with the NBA. The last thing the league wants is unpaid promotion on their brand. It can be petty, but it's a business thing. Number 3. Designer Band-Aids This very special rule was made by future Hall of Famer Dwayne Wade. You see, during his legendary career, he hurt his face and thus covered up the cut with a band-aid. The problem, though, was that he decided to decorate the band-aids. He put Flash on one and Wade on another, and one even had the American flag. But the NBA saw this as branding and thus decided that you can wear regular band-aids or not wear them at all. So much for self-expression. Number 2. Candy Yep, this is something that exists in the NBA, and in fact, they get very specific in what you can and can't have in terms of candy. You can't have lollipops or suckers, you can't have gummy bears, licorice, starbursts, skittles, Reese's Pieces, and on and on the list goes. This is definitely a case of the NBA not being sweet to their players. Number 1. Non-Clear Face Mask During the 2013-2014 season, LeBron had a broken nose, so he put on a face mask so that he could keep playing while protecting his nose. But the mask that was being made for him wasn't ready, so he donned a pure black one made of carbon fiber. The NBA didn't like the mask he wore, though, and so they demanded that he switch back to the clear mask one and make sure he didn't use the black one again. They even made a rule that this kind of face mask couldn't be worn again. It's honestly a bit vague as to why this particular kind of mask was banned, but some think it was because of the intimidation factor, as LeBron himself called it his Batman mask. But you'll have to ask the NBA for verification on that theory. So what do you think? What do you think of this look at the accessories the NBA holds in contempt and will penalize players for wearing or using in any way? Can you believe some of the things that they banned from the league and some of the reasons they had for doing so? Which items do you think should be allowed as they honestly don't change the integrity of the game? Let us know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe and we'll see you next time on the channel. I'm on the channel.